Hey guys, my name is Tom Pham, and this is a, another subscriber question. Just a heads up, this is very candid, this is not planned, and not edited for the most part. So, yeah, forgive me. Anyways, here's a video. Hey Jedi Master Lenny, I saw your question on the RPG Maker web forms and I wanted to give you a video response so you can sort of follow along and ask questions along the way and see if this is something that's um, that's right for you. Now, to answer your question, yes, you can make a battle system that's based off of math that gives you choices and options and so forth. It's not going to be pretty. Well, it might be pretty. But um, if you don't want to do any coding or anything like that, then this video might be right for you. So let's start a new RPG Maker project and go straight to database, which is that gearbox at the very top. The first thing I want to do, just so you could hear me, is I'm going to turn off the music and probably the, the sound of the cursor too so this way you could hear me while the battle's going you don't have to do that but one thing that I do want you to do though is turn on side view battle so this way you could see stuff going on and let's go to troops to our first monster and I'm going to remove one of the monsters just so it's easier for you and let's move it back so this page is really important um, it's going to be events that are running during your battle and um, the way that we're going to do is essentially use a sl use a loop, but change the condition to let's do actor HP when it's below 100%. So basically, it's always going to run no matter what. It's going to run to the span of the battle, and the conditions we're going to use by double clicking under it is a regular loop. And so when you click on it, you have loop and repeat above. So anything under here is going to keep going over and over again. So let's test it. Let's show a text, and uh, it'll be. 2x, no, 2 plus x is equal to 10. So we're just testing if this works. Okay, see now it's asking me the question over and over and over again. So that's good. So the next thing I'm going to do is use show choices. So right under 2 plus x or that question, I'm going to use a show choice and um, let's input some stuff that the player could input. So 1, 8, or 4, 2, 8, 6. And you know what, I'm going to reduce that just so you could see it. There you go. So if they select 1, this happens 4 and then 8. So under the wrong answers, we're going to show it text incorrect. I'm going to copy and paste that. And then under the correct answer, we're going to change that to correct. Now, if you ever want to edit an event directly rather than having to create a new event by double clicking, you could click on the event and then press space. It's a handy trick to know. So, again, let's test this. Battle starts, asks us the question, asks us the choices. Incorrect. Incorrect. Correct. Okay, cool. So now let's add actions to this. Under the incorrect ones, we're going to create a new event by clicking the events under it. Go to 3, force action, an enemy, say the bat or something. Um, and really the index of 1, it doesn't really matter as long as you select something that's in there. It's going to use attack and add a random target. So if you're incorrect, the monster attacks you and we're going to copy and paste that to the wrong answer. And in fact, we're going to also, under the correct answer, we're going to change that to actor, the main character, attack, and random. So again, I just copied and pasted it with Control c then, um, and then use Control v to put it down there. Then I clicked on the event and pressed space. So that this, what this will do is if I answer the question correctly, it will force my character to attack. So battle test. Okay. Okay, incorrect. Okay, I get hit. And now correct. He attacks. Cool, works. So, um, that's the basics of it. Um, this is a math formula type battle system um, that definitely works, but let's say you don't want to always ask the same questions over and over again, and that's where a condition branch comes in. So. 
a condition branch is essentially an if then statement. If this happens, then this will happen. Um, and we're going to be using variables to kind of randomize that. So let's go ahead and just select everything that's under that loop. And we're just going to control C just so we have under our clipboard. And let's delete it. Let's first create a variable. So under the first one, go to control variables. And then I'm going to use random. And um, it's always good to name the variable that you're going to be using. So under single, click on this ellipses. And then let's call this counter or anything you want, really. So what a variable basically is, is, is a number. Um, anything that is a number, can be represented by a number, is a variable. Um, and just like in math, a variable could also be x if you really wanted it. But in game terms, it's really just a number that you could use. So in this case, we're going to we want to define a random number. Um, so we choose a zero through, say, just for the sake of easiness, four. So when this runs, it'll assign counter number one to either a value of zero, one, two, three, and four. Don't forget, it's using zero too, and zero does count as an index. So now it's going to assign that counter, and we're going to then use a condition branch. So flow condition branch variable so basically we're saying that if variable counter is equal to zero this will happen so let's copy and paste no 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 don't copy and paste it um let's put this somewhere put the uh, put the other stuff that we had put it under there so you could use it later but then when you when you paste it because again you're going to be copying and pasting this like crazy so i'm um, copy and paste the condition branch five times and then change the counter sequentially so one two three four and you could do as many as you want you could do more than four if you really want to you just have to make sure that you change the random counter then we're going to take the the little equation thing that we did we, we're going to highlight by holding shift and clicking downward or you could use even control X to, um, to cut. And we're going to paste that into zero. So that's one equation. Let's also paste this into um, counter number one, counter number two, three, and four. So we have the same exact stuff in all five counters. And again, five because zero is an index two. So what this is going to do now is when it calls a random variable, either zero through four, say, let's say it picks three, a condition branch will, uh, will run, it'll find three, and it'll ask this question. So we have to change this up. So zero works, so let's do one. What is, we're gonna change the text to one plus one, no, yeah, well, one plus one is equal to x. Then show the choices. We'll do two. And again, for the sake of easiness, six. And so, because it's two, we gotta move the stuff around. So, let's delete this, but cut that, move that there, copy that into the wrong answer. So, again, I have a question is one plus one is equal to x. I'm show choices two, four, six. If you choose two, it's the correct answer. Herald will attack. And keep going. Let's just make some math uh, math equations. So two plus four is equal to x. Six, nine, twelve. I can't believe I actually had to think about that for a second. So we're moving correct. to six, we're moving incorrect to 12. And all I'm doing is copying and pasting. And don't forget, hold shift, and then just highlight multiple rows if you want to do, if you want to copy more than one thing. And you know what, let's do three times y is equal to 12. Oh, that's hard for a kid. What is that, four? Yeah, that's four. Eh, cool, I already have a four. So move around the stuff again. And the last one, 
you know, I'm going to leave it alone just because you get the idea. So anyways, all of this is now different. Let's see how this works. And you know what, I'm going to remove the other heroes too, just so they're less annoying. Okay, so, first question. Okay, that's a 8. That's... There you go. Uh, four. Eight. And obviously because I have two, um, that question in there twice, it's going to show a little bit of a Okay. Okay, so the battle ended. And now how can we account for that? Okay, sorry. I had to pause the video and figure something out. So yeah, I mean, if you're doing it the way that I was doing it as well, well let's change it back. Um, what kept happening was that when you kept fighting, oh God, really, he misses. This happens. Another question, and it doesn't matter what you do, you get an error. Um, so the way to fix this is um, the reason it's happening, because it's still looping. Don't forget, we're still under a, a loop that's um, that's never breaking. So we, we want to break that as soon as possible. Um, we're going to need to use another condition branch. So if we double click on an event, it'll create an event on top of it. So we want to do it in the first, we, we want to create the event before everything happens in the loop. So let's double click on the control variable, go to condition branch, let's do if enemy bat1 state is knocked out, we want to then break the loop. So again what's happening here is that we have a condition where if the actor's HP is 100% or below, so it's always going to happen, it's always going to trigger, at least this loop will. Um, and again, this means that you'll never um, see the actual battle system, you'll just be, be using the battlers. Um, then this event triggers, and this will um, be throughout the battle. And this event essentially is one really big loop. Um, first thing that's going to happen is that it's going to check if the bat is knocked out. If it is, then it'll break the loop. So at the start of the battle, it's never going to be knocked out. It's then going to call a random uh, variable, or essentially a random integer from 0 to 4, and assign that to counter. So let's say counter is now assigned to 2. It now will then find your condition branch that is associated to 2. We have different condition branches that go from 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Every condition branch has a different equation on it with a different set of answers. This um, also has choices, or these answers essentially is the battle system. Um, for the correct ones, we have a text box saying correct, and you, you technically don't even need to say correct if you don't want to. But we do have a force action for the a hero to attack if it's correct, and the battle, a um, battle action for the enemy to attack if you're incorrect. Um, and this will keep looping and looping until someone dies. Um, you should probably also put another loop in there in case the actor dies. So character, who's, oh, actor, huh. How do we check if the actor dies? I wonder what happens when you die. Hold on a sec, I'm gonna pause the video. Okay, that was silly. It was actually in the same condition branch. Um, so you want to add another condition branch for when the actor is dead. So copy and paste your break loop, and let's edit it. Go to second page, actor, main character, in the state of knockout. So let's test. This is just to test if he dies. Okay, purposely get the wrong answer. Oh my god. Okay, game's over. And so we're going to test what happens when he wins. I'm going to debuff the enemy. 
apply pedal test. His HP. Sorry. Trying again, I just adjusted the HP. Okay, so it works. So I really hope this helps. Um, if you have any questions or if you want another way to do it, let me know and I'll be happy to help.